Hello everyone, I'm Norman Wahlberger and we're learning how to play Go. So I'm teaching you some basic opening patterns. I've talked about the 3-3 three, three point, which is this one here in the corner and how there's some natural patterns associated with this. Now we're going to move to the 3-4 point, which is uh, much more popular and uh, more widely used as an opening move. So this one doesn't quite establish such a strong hold on the corner. Really, a second move is required in order to do that. And the second move is invariably either here or here or out here. Or maybe even here, any of these four uh, stones. But we're going to consider the, um, the possibilities where the opponent is going to play um, first, before you have a chance to enclose the corner, okay? And there's a number of patterns that, that are here. In fact, there's hundreds of patterns. And um, in years gone by, um, students of Go would have spent many, many, many hours studying these various joseki, as they're called. These are these standardized opening plays that have been studied for centuries and which are now uh, really well understood. Um, so the optimal plays for both black and white have been worked out after long trial and error and experience. And so it's a real great source of um, of understanding basic patterns and, and what, what moves work and what moves don't work. So it's a, it's a huge uh, subject, this, this story of classical Joseki in Go. And so we're just going to touch just a little bit of it here. And I'm going to start with really the simplest variations probably, um, which is the high approach move. So uh, we're going to look at four different situations and I'm going to show you some four examples. And um, the, uh, I guess it's black to play. Okay, so maybe black will play over here. Okay, and this is a, a very popular approach move. It's not maybe quite as popular as, as this lower one, but it's in some sense simpler. Okay, it's some sense simpler and maybe easier to understand. Okay, so what are the, some of the basic patterns that occur with this? So it's white to play now. White can uh, respond in a number of ways. White can try to secure the corner territory, which is very natural and reasonable. The way to do that would be to attach below the black stone here, and we're going to look at that. But another option would be to play out in this direction, sort of moving towards the side. And uh, an even stronger move would be to play on, on this side out here in case, say, white had a big wall over here and really was looking to make a big territory on this side. White would play uh, perhaps on, on this stone here, looking to make a, a wall here to complement the wall that's on this side. All right. So... Uh, those are some of the, um, the approaches, but on the other hand, there's a whole range of other possibilities where white pincers this black stone. That is, white plays a, a move on the other side of the, the stone, preventing black from making an easy base. Right, so such a, a pincering move is a little bit more aggressive and will lead to earlier fighting. They're also a little bit more complicated to understand, especially for beginners. So they're, they're quite important to, to understand, but we're going to start with the simplest patterns. So I think the simplest pattern is when white attaches here, his intention is very clear, wants to solidify the corner. Now, it's possible, I suppose, for black to play in here, but it's not a very good move. So black almost invariably plays out here. And then white will draw back connecting his groups. And you can see that's making a strong shape that really does enclose uh, the corner. And now black wants to connect. So here there's a cutting point. So if white plays here, then these two stones are separated. They are no longer part of the same clique. And that means that white could then have the potential of killing one of those. Okay. So black generally doesn't want to, uh, to allow that. So black will connect. And this is the simplest and most direct way of connecting. Okay. Now white will want to play another move to prevent black from pressing over here and, and confining him to a small life in the corner. So there's usually two moves, this one or this one. This is perhaps the most common one. So now white has made a nice extension. Now the, the corner territory is very clearly white's. And black should play a move on this side. Now it's an interesting question. How far should black go? 
let's ignore this stone here, okay? Let's pretend this was not here. Just by itself, the standard move would probably be this one right here. Let's play that one. So this is a reasonable move, why? Because there's, you see there's three spaces between this stone and this little wall of two. As a general rule of thumb, if you have a, a wall of height n, okay, then you're allowed to jump n plus one points to make an extension. You may remember if there was a single stone here, then the usual extension is sort of like two points. You, you jump over two points. Here there's a wall of two stones facing this way, and so black is entitled to play over here. So this is a kind of an optimal move. Uh, this would be too constrained. It would be too narrow, considering the investment that black has made. On the other hand, if black played further along, then that would be too open. It would be inviting white to invade here and separate black into two groups. Okay, so this is um, the most uh, reasonable move, perhaps. Although in this circumstance here, um, black would certainly also think about playing this move. This is also another nice shape move, the same kind of idea, except that now this is a sort of a high position, but happily it's balanced with this lower position. So we often talk about higher and lower. So higher generally refers to the fourth line. This is the fourth line, right? First line, second line, third line, fourth line. And lower in this context refers to the third line. Okay, so here we have a high stone and here is a lower stone. And then there's a, a kind of a, some loose kind of a net that encloses this um, territory. So this is also an option. But let's stick with our earlier plan. Okay, so this is then um, a peaceful resolution, and I think both parties can uh, be satisfied with the result. Uh, certainly white has a little bit more territory, yes, but I think perhaps black has more possibility for expansion in this side direction and also in the center. So these three stones here, they, they're quite strong towards the center, so, so maybe black could even think about, you know, maybe making a... Uh, uh, territory along here somewhere, or, or if there's a, a wall here, then, then maybe that could be sort of a part of a framework for a, a larger territory. While white's position here is rather uh, low and limited, it's not so easy for white to use these stones to make a big territory. This is a trade-off that we have, so, um, you know, bird in the hand versus two in the bush kind of thing, okay? So here white is happy with the solid profit in the, in the corner, despite not having so much central influence. Okay, great. So who's turn it? It's White's turn. So let's have White um, play over here. And now I'm just going to show you another variant of this, um, where it starts the same as before. Okay, but this in this case, uh, White plays this kind of some sort of sometimes called a hanging connection. Okay, so this also prevents this cut here. And it sort of moves in this direction a little bit um, more quickly. And in fact, in this game here, this might not be uh, unreasonable at all because white has a low position here. And so white is looking to, you know, enclose a, a, a biggish territory here. Now, black can also play over here. Okay, that's also a, a reasonable move. Another move that black could play is, is to play here. Another move that black might play is, is to play here, okay? And if white responded, then maybe black could even um, play something like this, in case maybe uh, black was more interested in, in the direction over here. But um, let's, uh, let's have um, black play, okay, here, this is probably the standard, the, the more common move. And now white is more or less obliged to make an extension and the usual extension would be, well, a little bit further than this one. So if this stone was over here, then there would be a th um, three, and, and white would be over here, okay? So um, with this thing here, white is actually justified in, in going a little bit further. Now, if these stones were not here, then you, we would expect that this would be the, the standard move, perhaps, for white to finish this pattern. However, if you were a... Um, you know, a, a beginner, this is also quite a reasonable play, and it's in some sense a little bit safer and, and, and more secure. Now, in this situation here, 
Um, White might well um, think about being uh, even more um, adventurous. Uh, suppose White could play one of these. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe something like this. Uh, maybe White could do something like that. Okay. Maybe it would invite Black to come in here, and there would be some fighting. But uh, okay. So this is um, a kind of a pattern, but this is not necessarily the only move. Probably more typical would be to play below it or even over here. Okay, but the same idea uh, you've been seeing as I was over here. Um, there is a, a subdivision between white's side and, and sort of central influence and black's solid corner territory and strong safe position. Okay, um, let's try something else. So uh, in this case here, um, black is, is playing over here. And, and maybe in this case, let's have white um, be, wanted to play on the side. Okay, so white might play on the side in, in a number of ways. Um, this, this is um, a, a very sort of standard kind of shape uh, to, to move out. And then you can sort of see white is starting to, to, to move towards creating a, a bigger territory on the side here. So white is now not emphasizing the corner quite so much, but rather the side. Okay, what could black do? Well, black could just retreat out here somewhere. But if black wants to settle the corner, or like take some of the corner for herself, she could play here. And then it's peaceful and reasonable for white to play here. And then black pulls back. And now in this shape here, white needs another stone to deal with this thinness here. So black has, has various um, uh, moves otherwise here. So um, white will probably want to play one more. And uh, there's really two moves. One of them is, is this one. So as a beginner, I would uh, recommend this play here. Okay? This is a nice uh, shape. It's a strong shape. Um, if black plays here later on, he's not going to do it now, or she's not going to do it now. But um, if black plays there later, then white can play here, threatening to take this stone, so, so black sort of has to play here. Okay. Um, but after white plays here, black is not going to play here. That's too small. Black is going to play out here. And again, an extension is made. Um, Perhaps over here is, is a reasonable extension, although a strong player might might play a little bit further out. But that's this is a reasonable extension. Now, in this case here, white doesn't really have to play an additional stone, although if white wants to, white could play somewhere over here to, to enclose a, a territory in this direction. But this this is a kind of a local um, shape that's that's reasonable. Okay, I'm going to show you uh, one uh, other kind of thing. So um, let's uh, let's have a look at this, and um, I, I'm going to show you in this case here, for example, what might black do. Uh, it's a little bit different, a different uh, response to this high approach move. Well, we're going to try this side attachment on this side this time. This is not unreasonable because black already in this game here, black already has a strong position on the side. So black wouldn't mind creating a larger framework. Okay, so white might pull back there and black would uh, pull back, okay, connecting with this stone here. Now white has a very uh, big cutting point here. White does not want to let black play here because then very likely black will swallow this stone here and uh, and make a big life in the corner. Or if white sort of saves this one, then this one here will likely get eaten up in, in the center in a big way. So white wants to protect this. And this loose hanging connection, which is something similar to what you've seen down here, is, a, is an elegant way of doing that. Now, in this case here, um, black has you know, several options. One would be to to try to take a little bit more of the territory by playing here, and then white could respond here, and black could either come down here or, or maybe more conservatively play like this. Okay, that would be enough for white, and then white could, um, in this case here, uh, play one more move, say to to um, 
solidify this side territory. Well, this would be a, a sort of a reasonable kind of outcome um, that uh, shows another kind of pattern. So we've looked at a number of different examples of a 3-4 point in the uh, corner, followed by a, a high um, high approach move to that 3-4 point and various um, responses to that. <laughs>